for the list. Oh, let's me yeah, let's move on to this one. This is a in, fairly interesting news in the world of um, football, more so. So, it appears like according to Sky Sports News, Tottenham are in talks with Antonio Co- Antonio Conte to replace the exiting um, who did they sack Jose Mourinho. And then allegedly, or already allegedly, it's been confirmed now, Carl Ancelotti has rejoined Real Madrid as coach, right? So this, I think there was a lot of conversation around Erling Haaland and um, Kylian Mbappe in terms of their transfers were going to dictate, no, sorry, the transfers of Lionel Messi um, specifically and maybe Cristiano to a certain extent were going to it dictate and kind of cause a domino effect with loads of other players moving in the market. And obviously that's, that hasn't happened just yet. But what has happened has been this weird managerial merry-go-round where um, maybe it was the lead, maybe it was the second of Mourinho, maybe kind of prompted it. But the second of Mourinho, uh, Zinedine Zidane leaving, Tuncho obviously being hired by um, Chelsea mid-season and do so well for Chelsea, definitely made other clubs take attention. The fact that maybe Lille's manager might be out of a job or leaving Lille too after securing the French league on with them too. There's loads of weird occurrences going on at the moment. And if anything, this is just maybe further highlighted the real gap in terms of how Manchester United fans see our club and how the owners actually see what we're doing in terms of sporting achievement in terms of football greatness in terms of competing for the highest honours in our league because the appointment allegedly if this goes through of Tottenham um, appointing Antonio Conte and obviously hiring this other football director called Fabio Patrici who allegedly was no, who was somebody who was in charge at Juventus when Conte was there too so they quite clearly are aiming to rebuild and kind of rejuvenate their aging squad something that Pochettino pointed out before he was sacked as well but they're also planning to do it with somebody that kind of has synergy with the coach that they're willing to hire so there's a relationship there there's a camaraderie obviously Conte is known to be a bit of a firebrand difficult to work with so if you're going to make it as easy as you can for yourself why not hire and bring in somebody who worked well with him during that time and then you've got of course Real Madrid deciding to move on from Zidane and reappoint to Carlo Ancelotti, who's essentially a safe pair of hands if you want to hire somebody who can maybe transition the squad out of the you know Bale uh which was his name uh Benzema, Sergio Ramos, all these kind of aging Real Madrid legends and sort of ushering a new um, dawn at Real Madrid, the best person to do it with is maybe their greatest man manager, right? Somebody who a lot of players have a lot of time for. Um, he's very how it, well, well regarded. Um, Ramos even had a lot of great things to say about him during his time there. And a lot of the players were actually disappointed when he got fired. I think in 2015 it was. So there's a lot of kind of um, sense in this decision. Of course, Ancelotti's sake, you know, even though his time at Everton wasn't the best, you know, getting the call from Real Madrid was just a no-brainer. I'd imagine his contract he signed at Everton probably had a couple of clauses in it where if a certain club of a certain stature approached him during his time at Everton, if he'd done a good job, that he could uh, trigger a move and maybe buy himself out of it, of the contract, whatever it may be, or trigger an exit kind of strategy. And that's what he eventually ended up doing. But these two transfers or these two managerial appointments, uh, one potential in Tottenham getting Conte and obviously one confirmed with Ancelotti going to um, going back to Real Madrid after joining Everton, are a clear indication that these teams are striving to win trophies. They're striving to win the league title. They're striving to compete with all the biggest honours. What we're doing at Man United at the moment, from what I've seen, again, looking from afar, it just looks like the remit has suddenly changed in terms of what's kind of uh, deemed to be a success. Maybe it's because of the level of manager we've got in Solskjaer. You can't really expect him to maybe achieve the heady heights of winning the league or winning title or winning trophies consistent on a consistent basis because he's a bit of a, you know, average manager in that regard. And it's mostly about the things in and around him being in place in order for him to do his best work. Some would argue that. I don't really think that's true, but some would argue that's the case. What's interesting is that we've suddenly approached this period in time with Solskjaer where because we've been able to qualify for the Champions League, I think now two seasons in a row, we've basically been able to see that without trophies, the two seasons in a row qualifying for the Champions League in the top four is basically a clear indication that we're okay being a team that finishes the top four without winning trophies because the number one remit to be a successful Man United coach right now is top four football. If you don't get top four football and you still win the Champions League, you can still get fired because the Glazers want that European money. They want that prestige. Um, they want that access, that guaranteed income that comes in season in, season out. Um, but they don't want 
to actually compete for to win the actual trophy itself right they don't actually bother that winning the trophy and same goes for the premier league right top obviously finishing in the top four you obviously get a bigger purse but they don't actually care about trying to compete for the league title it's a bonus if we do maybe win a league cup and FA cup but that's just about it and i think for as much conversation as there is around social being replaced i think the real onus needs to be placed once more on the glazers needs to be placed once more on the overall structure we have at the moment i think i read an article prior on the podcast about allegedly um social was um going to be offered a new three-year contract right a reward for basically failing to win the europa league against Villarreal, right a club that's never won the europa league um i guess Unai emery a club a, a manager who arsenal thought wasn't good enough and went to you know Villarreal and ended up winning the europa league and knocking out arsenal along the process and obviously beating us in the final but hey we put that to one side we've obviously seen now with soul shock that those trophies don't really matter just the league titles is good enough and it's really concerning which is why i say the attention needs to be put back onto the glazers and the overall structure of the club i think we alarm bells should have been ringing for all fans when the club decided to hire john moto or to promote john moto internally to be the director of football for the director after many many years of forced dawns and telling us that they were doing extensive searches and they were kind of scouring the world for the best people to take over that position because obviously in most big clubs having a kind of overall director of football who kind of lays out the overall plan and visions for the club going forward maybe in five-year increments maybe 10-year increments is very important at the top level because i think the understanding is that you're always going to change managers you're always going to be um, rotating managers or rotating players they're going to come and go but you need to have an overall vision that kind of stays in place so that you can have managers and players that can fit that vision better as opposed to in the past where Arsene Wenger and you know Sirs Ferguson were in charge where essentially the manager dictated the vision of the club but then in that regard you need your manager to stay long to make that vision and to make those players acquisitions make sense you can't just be keep hiring different managers as we've done you know Man United you know from Moyes to Van Gaal to Mourinho three managers with three completely different outlooks on how they play football and tactically and philosophically whatever it may be so you end up with like you know three different types of players essentially and so if you hire out to football you have this one cohesive vision and obviously United finally did it at the last minute that we hire internal hire of somebody that's supposed to be at the club ever since David Moyes was there so it's going back what seven or so years um it hasn't really shown any kind of ability to really um you know compete or to battle on the same footing as some of the other stellar director footballs out there in world football and essentially somebody who is you know very happy and okay with the job that you know oligon social is doing right now united so there's no pressure on him that way in terms of that success and then in terms of the actual evaluating of players and how we hide them all that sort of malarkey it's all done by a weird committee where social is still involved where he shouldn't be it's just it's a complete mess and i think for as much bad as Oli social has done which he has done i think the real pressure needs to be put on the coaching i mean on the overall structure of our club because what we've seen so far from ollie is that he's never going to admit that his coaching staff isn't good enough He's never going to be, um, he's never going to have the guts to maybe say he's not good enough and we just step away and get someone else to take over the job. He's never going to call out the Glazers and say that they're not adequately backing him in terms of signings because he's quite clearly shown us he can't be a coach that's going to bring out the best in, you know, mediocre players. He's going to need high quality first team players that can just step in and play for him to be anywhere successful in this club we haven't actually seen the evidence of it clearly won a trophy but in order for him to actually be successful the only way he can do it is by having really really good players um the glazers are unwilling to spend a lot of money especially since we've qualified for the Europe, for the champions league we always do this every time we need to finish in champions league we spend money every time we, we are in champions league we don't spend that much money so the real pressure should be put on the owners because i feel like if we had a better structure and we had better people at the club who were really you know had the best sporting interest of the club to heart someone like an Oli Solskjaer wouldn't be at the club for so long he wouldn't he just wouldn't be here for so long he would have had this season maybe to try and win a trophy if that didn't happen he would have got his marching orders regardless of where we finished in the league even if we finished second the points tally doesn't really reflect our performances um the day-to-day matches as well weren't really you know nothing to write home about the unbeaten away record doesn't mean crap if you don't win any trophies so he would have been out in a really stringent 
and kind of methodical, clear uh, footballing structure that actually had some sporting ambitions tied to it, they would have sacked him ages ago. But under this current ownership we have at the moment, similar to how Arsenal Winger was at Arsenal, where he was stinking of the place, you know, for many years, you know, qualifying for the Champions League for what I think twelve seasons or so in a row, right? Not really taking the club any further than what they, you know, some would argue they probably would need Arsenal Winger now, but you know what I mean, right? just settling for that kind of mediocrity essentially put them in such bad positions where they're still probably trying to recover from it now and i feel like for united we're so fortunate in that we actually have decent players who can maybe turn it on on their day so we don't really so a lot of those kind of deficiencies are sort of papered over in some regard but sooner or later they're going to be exposed and i'm just really concerned that we're putting ourselves in a position where we're waiting for ourselves to be on our knees until we make a change right we're waiting for social to get things really really wrong and then suddenly we're going to make a change to change things for the better but still the structure around the players the structure around the team is not adequately set up in a way to bring out the best in whoever we hire as a coach going forward and that's a really concerning part and again with the appointments potentially of Carl Ancelotti to Everton and oh no Carl Ancelotti sorry going back to Real Madrid and obviously Conte supposedly maybe going back to Spurs or going back to Spurs going to Spurs Pochettino you know threatening to leave PSG there's always big coaches with pedigree with you know uh, prestige with whatever it may be called right with a good reputation with actual good you know credit in the bank who are there and ready to you know maybe you know take over and elect some change it's really disturbing to see us just settling for what social Strike is giving us at the moment just because we finished second it's just a very bizarre state to be in at the moment but you know i guess this is what happens in it when you have the years and years of mismanagement from the upper levels it's just it's, it's always going to come back to roost and i think this is something that we're just going to have to swallow as united fans like we just can't get away with being i just think it's unfair for us as united fans to expect us to win stuff knowing that we have probably one of the worst run clubs in the top four easily maybe in the top 10 in terms of like you know footballing people you know doing right by the club's heritage and all that malarkey we're definitely the worst run football club um considering it was actually all our resources and our you know, ability to generate money it just doesn't make any sense why a club like ours should be in a position to challenge for trophies but we are we still finished second we were in most cup comp competitions until the you know somewhat latter stages as part of the champions league where we got dumped in the group stages but for the most part we did pretty well right um overall as a season so there's obviously something there it just needs a little bit of tweaking a little bit of direction it's a little bit of quality and that means managerial coaching wise right it needs quality in there no one can tell me Solskjaer is a quality coach because he isn't he leaves united and i'll and i would really be surprised if he gets another top 10 job really surprised um so that's very concerning in that regard but again maybe it's just something we just have to swallow i just don't see united challenging for trophies and league titles with the glazers in charge with john moto as a director of football with darren fletcher as his assistant it just doesn't work like that you have to have high quality people in those positions in order to bring out the best in whatever you do have as a club it just doesn't work like you just sign a a good coach and then suddenly you start winning things in the papers over all the other cracks it doesn't work like that anymore you need to have structure in place especially if you're bringing in these really top level coaches who don't really want to be managers anyway who don't want to do all the marketing and sport you know overall responsibilities that say experts did before some of them just want to do training sessions if that's the case you're going to have to be able to have people in place who can get them the best players best training facilities best coaches and at the moment we just haven't got that we just haven't got that